Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you today to Young Martin's Reels. And our reel today is going to be this Bronson Buddy number 800. And uh, it's actually not a half bad little reel. It's, it's lightweight. It, uh, it's small. It's very dirty. But as dirty as it is, it still functions in every way. The anti-reverse works on it, anti-reverse override works, the bail flips, the drag works. Everything on this reel is completely functional. So, let's get started on it. We're going to start off by taking off the spool. There's a spring inside of here. Okay, and that spring rides on this drag washer with this right here all right yeah and it's pretty dirty but overall it seems to work okay okay we got that out and this has got an in, un, rather unusual clicker i don't know if you how well you can see it well we'll take it out that way you can really see it good uh, but the clicker on this thing is actually a uh, spring-loaded pin and for that's for the drag clicker all right, let's go ahead and remove the screw holding on the handle. Now we can remove the handle, followed up by two screws. All right, with the screws removed, we should be able to take the side case off. And remove the main gear out of the side case. There is our anti-reverse. And the anti-reverse on this has been running very dry. Uh, and it might be why it's kind of noisy. You can see where it's been rubbing really hard on the back of the main gear. I think we're going to lubricate that when we put it in. We'll scrub that up good and we're going to lubricate it when we put it back. But there it is. That's your anti-reverse. If you slide it into this position, it lifts it up away from the main gear. And in this position, it uh, sits it down against the main gear so that it can act as an anti-reverse. All right, now that's done. Let's see what it's going to take to remove the axle shaft. Okay, it appears that the axle shaft is held in place by a C-clip up under here. Can't see it all that well, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And uh, let's see if I can rotate it around a little bit. Yep, definitely a C-clip. Okay, I've got it rotated around. Boy, it doesn't look like it's going to be fun to pop that off of there either. But let's... Push the axle shaft down and see if we can get in there. I think it's going to take screw, two screwdrivers. One on each set. That is a very, very tiny C-clip or E-clip holding that in place. And you're not going to be able to see me do this, I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn it away from the camera. So that I can see it. Maybe you'll be able to see it. I don't know. Still no go. Man, that is a tight little spot for that thing to be in. There we go. I got it to pop loose. And let's see if I can get it out the rest of the way. Okay, the C-clip just fell down underneath, and now the axle shaft will pull out, like so, and that allows us to take off our uh, cross-wind block. And this cross-wind block has virtually no 
lubrication on it whatsoever. Okay, here's our C-clip that we've got to put back in. And it's a tiny one. There it is. Okay, with that done, now we can take this nut off. And that one's going to require a socket. Let's try a 14 millimeter. And it is the 14 millimeter. We're going to unscrew that 14 millimeter nut off of there. There we go. And now the rotor should lift off. With the rotor off, we just got a spacer here. And the pinion gear comes out the back side. Like so. And everything on this thing is incredibly dry. And with as dry as it is, I'm really surprised that it was still working as well as it does. All right. So there it is. All disassembled. I'm going to spray it all down with some WD-40. Scrub all the parts. And uh, I'm not going to do one of these fast forward videos. I'm just going to um, scrub it all down and I'll come back to you with all clean parts, because I think by now most of you know how to clean a part. And, uh, all the parts are now clean and we're ready to start reassembly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off taking and reinstalling the pinion gear back into the body. We'll grease it up. We will put some grease on the gear teeth themselves. And we'll slide it back in from behind, like so. Once that's done, we'll come back and put this spacer back on. Then we're ready to put this rotor assembly back on but let me show you before i do because i usually take rotors apart or bale assemblies apart so that you can see how they work but this one you don't really need to you can see every part of it without ever taking it apart the only part that let, see how easy that comes off okay this part over here you would just simply remove this nut there's no spring i mean there is but it's not a, some weird spring that you have to load up okay this is just a spring that's permanently mounted in the bottom right here. All right. And its sole purpose is to supply tension on the bale itself. See how it goes through right here? If for some reason this was to bind up inside here and you had to take it off, you would simply take off this nut right here, lift this off, and then you would be able to move maneuver this around to take that off. But it's... There's no reason I can't, unless this is completely froze up in here. And if you keep this lubricated, it should never do that. But that's all there is to this one. It's very simple. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and slide it back on. And I'll let it all fall out because I didn't keep my finger on it. Okay, let's slide it back in one more time. Put the shim back on. Hold my finger on the gear this time and slide it up. And we got to align the flat sides of the gear with the flats in the hole on the rotor, like that. With that done, we'll screw the nut back on. There we go. And this is actually kind of a slam bale. Um, if you notice right here, underneath, when the bale goes up, it drops that lever out. The one we were just looking at in here with the spring on it, it drops that lever out of the bottom right here. Well, when the reel comes around, that lever hits this protrusion on the body right here and trips it over. So it's kind of a slam bale. Normally, this, a slam bale slams on the bale itself on the outside. In this case... It actually is hitting that trip lever on it. And I think that's pretty neat. Okay, we got that in. Now we're going to reinstall the axle shaft. 
And remember, I wanted to show you how this clicker works on this one. Okay, this is our clicker. See, it's a ball, it's a uh, shaft with a uh, spring on it, and they flattened it out on the other side to keep it from coming back through. But this will slide down in there, like so. And when it does, it rotates, and that's our click that you get. Not a very loud click, but that's our click. Okay, so let's go ahead, put our axle shaft assembly in. It's gonna fit through. Oh, before we do that, let's go ahead and put some grease on it. Now, as some of you know, I've been telling you to not put grease on axle shafts and I've changed my thinking. Um, as I've gotten a little more experienced, I'm kind of agreeing with Dennis more. There's not a lot of um, reason to not go ahead and put, there's not, I mean, it's just, not, it doesn't create that much tension. It is, you can feel the difference between axle shaft, grease, and uh, oil on there, but I think it's gonna be okay. All right, now we're gonna come back. We're gonna reinstall our crosswind block. We're gonna put grease on the bottom of it where it slides. And we'll put some down here on the actual case housing where it slides, like so. It should make it slide easier than what it has been. Okay, we're gonna drop this in. It is a larger hole in the front with a oblong, okay? And that's what's gonna lock the shaft and keep it from rotating. If you look at the axle shaft assembly right here, there is a flat spot on each side of it. And it's gonna lock into this piece right here like that. And that locks it so that it can't rotate. If you try to put it in the other way, Okay, it can't ever lock and it's going to spin. All right. Not to mention the fact that it can't go on far enough to get the C-clip back on. Okay, so it's going to lock in just like that. And we're going to put that C-clip right there. So let's slide it in. Put our crosswind block in. And we're going to rotate that around until that axle shaft goes in and locks. Like so. And now we have the lovely job of reinstalling. And I dropped it. Let's try this. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to put just a dab of grease on the end of a screwdriver and use that to set this in place. Like so. I don't know if you can see. And with it set in place, then we're gonna use the screwdriver to push it in. There, that wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Okay, now that axle is locked in place so it can't spin, but it will still oscillate up and down. based on this shaft here. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back and we're gonna oil the crankshaft. We're gonna put a little bit of grease on the back of this because I, I think it's wearing on that anti-reverse. And then on the front side, we're gonna take and we're gonna grease up the front here where the crosswind block rotates. And then we're gonna put grease on each on the teeth, like so. Okay. And we don't want to get carried away with the grease. Okay. And we've already oiled the shaft. We're gonna slide the shaft back in right there. And there's our anti-reverse. It still clicks okay. Those things up. First off, I got way too much grease on my fingers. So it's making everything greasy. 
So we'll do that, wipe it off a little bit, and now it's gonna come back. And I haven't cleaned this handle. All right, let's go ahead and install the handle back into the main gear so that it will stop falling out. Okay, now we're gonna move the cross wind block all the way to the front. We're gonna take, set this up with the cross wind block all the way to the front and see if we can't just sit it right in place. Take off the anti-reverse so I can rotate this in both directions so that I can get it to line up. It's definitely harder to line up. There we go. I got it lined up. But it was definitely harder to do so than I thought it would be. And it's still not completely lined up because... Oh! All right. That's, I now know what was holding it. Let's back up. And let me show you the right way to do it. I may edit this to take that part out. All right. Cross, we're going to set the cross wind block all the way to the front. We've got the handle on, which puts our lever for our cross wind block all the way to the front. There is a catch right here. If we try to set the front end first, it will not go in. You have to hook this in from the back and then set it down in place. And then gently rotate this around a little bit until it gets hooked on that cross wind block. Easier said than done. This may be one of the hardest ones I've ever done. There. I think it's in. Let's see. You'll know if you've got it. Yep, because now the axle shaft will go up and down. Okay, that was a little difficult to get lined up. There was not a simple way to do it. And part of it is because the cross wind, you would think that much bigger cross wind uh, post would make it easier, but instead it's in, it looks like it made it harder. All right, the next thing we're going to do, that's too much, we're going to put just a little bit of grease on this drag washer, and then I'm going to flip it over. so that we know it's been greased on both sides. Now I'm gonna wipe off the excess. We don't want tons and tons of grease on there. That would keep the drag from functioning, I believe. So we're gonna take some of the grease back off. There we go. And now we're going to slide the spool back on, like so. We're gonna put the upper drag washer on. All right, this last washer, we're going to put a little grease on that. And we're going to wipe it back off. Slip it in. And then the last metal washer, which fits down in there with the keyway, then goes the spring inside the cap. Set that on. Screw it down, and that's our drag adjustment. And wow, I've got it tight now. Okay, you can loosen it up as needed. And there is the Bronson Buddy 800. And uh, I got to strip the line off of it, but aside from that, it's ready to go. 
Uh, I don't think it's a real high gear ratio. I think it's actually going to be a very slow reel, but uh, it'd probably be uh, really absolutely fine for uh, bluegill fishing or something like that. So, hope you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, that's okay. Hit the dislike button. Tell me what you didn't like about it. And uh, there you have the Bronson Buddy 800. Uh, it probably will show up on eBay in the next week or so if somebody's interested in buying it. Um, it's going to go back to Ken. And if you'd like to see further videos like this, by all means, subscribe. For now, that's Rick Stivers, the Young Martin's Reels, signing out.